The doctor is in. Hi guys, it's Dr. Sal from DrSecrets.com. Thank you so much for joining in. Today we're going to take a look at hypothyroidism versus hyperthyroidism. Now these two topics tend to trip up a lot of people. By the end of this discussion, you will understand the difference between hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism and how they're treated, briefly. So let's start with a tale of two different people. This guy here is Mr. Fatigue. As you can see, he's slumped over his computer. He doesn't even have the energy to get through his day. He's got a big mug of coffee here, but it's not doing much for him. And then we have this other little sprightly thing over here. This is Mrs. Energizer Bunny. And she just can't stop yapping on the phone. She's, she's um, dangling her foot. She's tapping on the table. She's got so much energy, she doesn't even know what to do with herself. Now what is governing the difference between these two people? Is this guy on the left just lazy? And this girl on the right just um, righteous? Well, it actually comes down to, <coughs> in this case, <clears throat> um, your energy levels are governed by a master hormone called thyroxin and that gland lives in your neck here your thyroid gland it looks like a, a butterfly covering your neck here if you dissect the skin away and the whole purpose of that gland is to produce thyroxin the way I look at thyroxin is um, like the choke on a car if you pull the choke out you get more gas flowing to the engine and the system revs and you have more uh, power. In the same way, if you have more thyroid hormone circulating through your bloodstream, uh, secreted by this gland, <clears throat> that turns on the cellular structures of all your cells globally over your body. So it's basically delivering a spark or injecting NOS into every, every cell in your body. So if you understand that key difference, that will allow you, that's like a master key that then you can understand uh, henceforth the differences between hypothyroidism versus hyperthyroidism so in hyperthyroidism which is under this column here with this girl Mrs. Energy Bunny and hypothyroidism under this column here with Mr. Sleepyhead the thyroid um, output is increased in on this side here and decreased on this side here all right now let's look at a little more detail of the differences between these two individuals. Now for Mr. Sleepyhead, his cellular processes are getting slowed down because there's not enough stimulation, not enough spark coming to, to each cell telling them to, um, to blaze their furnaces up. So he's going to complain of things like no energy, no libido, cold sensitivity. What that basically means is he's in a room with his friends all of his friends are wearing uh, short sleeve shirts, tank tops, got their shirt off, and he's cold, he's freezing, he wants to wear a, uh, a winter jacket. That's cold sensitivity. And again, that's because his body is not producing enough heat because all of the cells globally are, um, are just uh, idling instead of firing up. Then another consequence is weight gain. And the weight gain is again because his cells are not burning up the energy that's pre being presented to them, so they just store it as fat. Check it in there. Then he'll also complain of uh, mental fog, again because his brain, his neurological processes are going to be slow. He may also complain of depression. And this is one of the reasons why sometimes when somebody comes to me in clinic um, for the first time saying that they're depressed, I'll insist that they go and get a blood test. And the reason for that is because some of the time, not all cases of depression are uh, software. Sometimes it's actually hardware problems. So one of the things I'll usually check for somebody complaining of depression is, is their thyroid function normal? Otherwise, you may put them on antidepressant when that wasn't the root cause of their problem in the first place. You should have put them on a thyroid uh, treatment. Then they may also notice um, dry skin and dry hair. Uh, typically, I don't usually get people coming in the office complaining of, of these two. But if you ask them specifically, then they'll say, oh, you know what, yeah, I do have that. And uh, finally, goiter. Goiter in this day and age is not very common to see. I'm, I might have seen it a couple of times throughout my entire career spanning a decade. Um, the goiter is basically caused because the brain starts sending a signal called the TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone 
that signal goes down to the thyroid and tell, tries to kick it, telling it, listen, I'm not sensing a thyroid hormone up here. I want you to start making more. The gland then just gets frustrated because of whatever process is uh, holding it back. It can't and it bloats. So it forms a swelling in the neck called a goiter. And um, I put menstrual changes here in brackets because obviously my gentleman here is not going to have any menstrual cycles. But if he were a female, he might notice things like um, long, long, um, heavy periods. Now let's go over to Mrs. Energizer Bunny. Now basically, her symptoms are going to be a, a mirror diametric image of his. So she, instead of no energy, she's going to say she has so much energy she can't sleep. Instead of no libido, she's going to be a libertarian. She wants it all the time. And then instead of cold sensitivity, she's going to be hot stuff. Everywhere she goes, she wants to start stripping clothes off because she feels hot all the time and sweats all the time. And one, um, one facet of this to be aware of is sometimes it can be tricky in somebody who is menopausal because in menopause, uh, females will get hot flashes. So sometimes it's hard to tease out which one it is depending on person's age. But say this is a 40 year old female or 30 years old. Um, and they're telling me that they're, they're hot all the time, sweating all the time. Um, that's going to clue me in that this is probably a thyroid issue. Not, uh, not not menopausal hot flashes. Then, unlike the guy there that's going to be gaining weight, and uh, a lot of the time that, ga that weight gain is usually somewhere from 20 to spectacular amounts, like 50 and 60 pounds over over uh, six months to a year. For her, though, uh, because her, th her thyroid furnace is burning red hot, she's going to complain uh, that she can't put on any weight. She's getting thin. Then mentally, uh, she may complain of uh, anxiety because she just can't turn her thoughts off. They're just racing because of the excessive energy coming to her neurological system. Uh, she may also complain of her heart racing and also tremors of her, of her hands. And the heart racing, again, is because of the hyperdynamic um, um, energy production system going on because of the um, excess thyroid hormone. And then she may com also complain of um, light to no periods at all and these are all consequences of having too little versus too much thyroid hormone it's just a little tiny chemical but it has wide-reaching significant consequences now the last thing I just want to leave you with now that you understand the differences between hyper and hypothyroidism is um, a neat uh, thing here that even though these two conditions are so different ultimately the last therapy usually tends to wind up being the same thing which is thyroid medication so you might ask yourself what well, that doesn't make any sense how could that be well this picture here is of 137 uh, micrograms of thyroxine which is thyroid hormone now obviously in the guy with too little um, thyroid hormone it's obvious why he would need thyroid supplementation but why would this girl here with excessive and overabundance of cornucopia of um, energy and thyroid hormone why would she need thyroid hormone too well that boils down that little uh, mystery boils down to the fact that in a lot of cases the only way we can eventually regulate the thyroid output in these people with hyperthyroidism is we often will have to kill the gland to stop it from producing so much thyroid hormone so we'll use, um, in some cases, sur surgery to remove the whole thyroid gland, but most of the time we use radioactive iodine, which gets itself incorporated or lodged into the thyroid gland. The radiation stays there and decimates the thyroid gland and then puts output to zero. So then once output from her is zero, then it's easy for us then to regulate how much thyroid hormone she's gonna have be exposed to in her bloodstream by artificially giving her this pill every day to um, give her what she should require. So that's why even though both these people are in two completely different camps, magically they end up being on the same treatment. <laughs> so anyway, that's um, hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism in a nutshell. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so I can keep you up to date on uh, new videos as I upload them. And have a great rest of your day.
Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now.